Hello everybody, this video is on calculations involving enthalpy of neutralization. By way of review, neutralization reactions are exothermic because they involve the formation of bonds. Specifically, when hydrogen ions react with hydroxyl ions to form water, every time a water molecule is formed, a covalent bond is formed between the hydrogen ion and hydroxyl ion. And the formation of this covalent bond is where the energy is released from. When performing calculations involving enthalpy change, it is important to consider this principle because the total energy that's released by the reaction ultimately depends on the number of moles of water molecules that's formed. So keep this in mind as we go through the subsequent calculation examples. Example 1, the reaction between hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide is shown by the following equation. And we are also given the enthalpy change of this neutralization. So minus 57.1 kilojoules per mole. This number here means that every time one mole of water is formed between the reaction of hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, it releases exactly 57.1 kilojoules of energy. So we have 10 milliliters of 2 moles per liter hydrochloric acid being added to 50 milliliters of 1 mole per liter of sodium hydroxide solution. The initial temperature of both solutions was 25.0 degrees Celsius. To find the maximum temperature of the final solution, we need to first find out how much energy was actually produced by the neutralization. And as I explained earlier, using the enthalpy change number, we need to find the number of moles of water that's produced. This is first done by considering the moles of the reactants. So the moles of hydrochloric acid is 2 moles per liter times by its volume. Of 0 0.01, so this is 0 0.02 moles. Similarly, the moles of sodium hydroxide is equal to 1 mole per liter multiply its volume of 50 milliliters, so this is 0 0.05 moles. Since the hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide react in a 1 to 1 ratio, the hydrochloric acid is a limiting reagent, so the moles of water formed depend on the moles of the hydrochloric acid which is also 0.02 moles, as the ratio between the water and HCl is 1 to 1. Now, we can find the energy that's released by neutralization by multiplying the enthalpy change of 57.1 kilojoules per mole by the number of moles of water, because we said the per mole here refers to the number of moles of water that's formed. This gives me an energy of minus 1.142 kilojoules, you can rewrite this as minus 1,142 joules. To make this calculation possible, we need to make an assumption that the amount of energy released is equal to the amount of energy that's absorbed by the solution. So in other words, we're assuming that none of this energy that we've produced from neutralization is lost to the surrounding. The energy absorbed by making this assumption would also equal to the same number, but positive. So positive 1142 joules. Using this number, we can now use Q equals to mc delta t to find the change in temperature. So the change in temperature equals to Q divided by mass divided by C. The final mass and specific capacity of the solution is not given by the question, so we need to make some additional assumptions. We can assume that the density of the final solution is the same as water, which is 1 gram per 1 mil. The final volume of the solution is 10 milliliters plus 50 milliliters, which is 60 milliliters. So if the density is 1 gram per 1 mil, the mass of the final solution will be 60 grams, which would be 0 0.06 kilograms. We can also assume that the specific capacity of the final solution is the same as water, 4.18 times 10 to the power of 3 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. So we'll substitute the mass here as 0.06 kilograms and the heat capacity as 4.18 times 10 to the power of 3. Again, I am using kilograms as the mass here instead of grams because it needs to be consistent with the unit of the heat capacity. The heat capacity here is joules per kilogram of the solution, therefore I need to use the unit for mass as kilograms and not grams. This gives me a temperature change of 4.55 degrees Celsius or Kelvins. 
Now to find the maximum temperature, I can simply add this number to the initial temperature of 25.0 degrees Celsius, which gives me a final answer of 29.6 degrees Celsius. And I'll leave this answer as three significant figures. In some experiments that investigate the enthalpy of neutralization, one of the compounds, either the acid or base, could be added as a solid form rather than a solution. This actually changes the calculation quite substantially because dissolution of a substance is associated with enthalpy change as well. For example, some substances, when they dissolve, they also produce energy, which is what we call exothermic reaction. This can be better understood by considering the following two examples. Number one, when you're adding solid form of sodium hydroxide to a solution of hydrochloric acid, and two, adding a solution of aqueous sodium hydroxide to a solution of hydrochloric acid. Assuming the number of moles of sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid are the same in both situations, the first example actually produces more energy. And this is because sodium hydroxide solid will first dissolve to form sodium and hydroxide aqueous ions before the hydroxide ion will react with the hydrochloric acid. The dissolution of sodium hydroxide is actually an exothermic process with a negative enthalpy change. So this means it will contribute to the temperature change of the solution and therefore affect our calculations. Let's look at example two. The reaction between hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide aqueous is given by the following reaction. So this is the same reaction and enthalpy change that we looked at in example one. So have a look at example one if you haven't already. In a particular experiment, five grams of solid sodium hydroxide is added to 100 milliliters or two moles per liter of hydrochloric acid. The final solution has a mass of 107.8 grams and a specific heat capacity of 3.95 joules per gram per Kelvin. The dissolution of sodium hydroxide is given by the equation. Sodium hydroxide solid gives you sodium and hydroxide aqueous ions, and the enthalpy change here is minus 40.5 kilojoules per mole. So this means every time one mole of sodium hydroxide dissolves, you will get 40.5 kilojoules of energy released. So we want to calculate the maximum increase in temperature of the final solution. It is important here to understand that the temperature increase in this example is due to two chemical reactions. It is not only due to the neutralization between hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, it is also due to the dissolution of the 5 grams of sodium hydroxide. Before we can calculate the temperature increase, we need to first find out how much energy does each of these two chemical reactions produce. Let's consider the dissolution of sodium hydroxide first. We need to find the moles of sodium hydroxide because the enthalpy change here is minus 40.5 kilojoules for every mole of sodium hydroxide that dissolves. And this is the mass of sodium hydroxide sample, which is 5 grams, divided by the molar mass, which is 22.99 plus 16 plus 1.008. This is equal to 0.125 moles. That means the amount of energy that's released from the dissolution of sodium hydroxide will be minus 40.5 kilojoules per mole times by 0.125 moles, which is equal to minus 5.06 kilojoules. And we can convert into joules by multiplying by a thousand, which is minus 5,063 joules. So this is the amount of energy that's produced by the dissolution of sodium hydroxide. We also need to find the amount of energy produced by the neutralization between hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. Minus 57.1 kilojoules per mole refers to the amount of energy produced per mole of water. So to find the energy produced by neutralization, I again need to find the moles of water that is formed. Before we can do that, we need to first find out what is the limiting reagent. We already have the moles of sodium hydroxide, so I just need to find the moles of hydrochloric acid by multiplying its concentration by its volume, which gives me 0.2 moles. Since the sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid re uh, react in a one-to-one -one ratio, the sodium hydroxide is my limiting reagent. 
Therefore, the moles of water that's produced is 0.125 moles. This is because the ratio between the sodium hydroxide and the water is a one-to-one -one ratio. So the energy that's released from neutralization is equal to minus 57.1 multiplied by 0.125, which gives me minus 7.1375 kilojoules. And this is equal to minus 7,138 joules. Now, just to summarize what we've done so far, we've calculated that the first reaction, which is the dissolution of sodium hydroxide, produces this much energy. And the second reaction, which is a neutralization between the acid and base, produces this much energy. So the total amount of energy that's produced is equal to the sum of these two numbers which is equal to minus 1.22 times 10 to the power 4 joules. Again, to make this calculation possible, we need to assume that the energy produced by the reactions is completely absorbed by the solution, and none of it is lost to the surrounding. So the energy absorbed by the solution then is equal to positive 1.22 times 10 to the power of 4 joules. Now we can use the formula Q equals to mc delta t to find the change in temperature. So positive 1.22 times 10 to the power of 4 is equal to the mass of the final solution, and in this case it's given to us. So this is 107.8 grams multiplied by the specific capacity, which is also given to us, 3.95 joules per gram per Kelvin. So this is 3.95 and then I times this by the change in temperature, which is what we're trying to find. In this instance, I can use the mass in grams instead of kilograms because the unit for my heat capacity is in joules per gram of the solution. So again, pay attention to the unit of your heat capacity to know what unit to use for mass. So the maximum change in temperature is equal to 28.7 degrees Celsius or Kelvins. I'll leave this in three significant figures. This concludes the video on calculations of enthalpy of neutralization.